Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and this is my walkthrough for free response question number one of the 2025 AP Chemistry exam. This is a long free response question worth a total of 10 points. That's about 22% of the entire free response section. As I record this video, the questions have just been posted to the College Board's website, so this is not an official key. I'm not an official spokesman for the College Board. I'm just an AP Chemistry teacher who's taught this class for a really long time. Remember that even if your method or explanation does not match mine exactly, any answer that is chemically correct should receive full credit. And if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button and share this video with a friend. I really appreciate your support. It's a lot of work, but I hope my videos have been helpful to you this year. Thanks again. Now, here's question number one. Question one pertains to magnesium and compounds containing magnesium. So here in part A, it says we have an incomplete mass spectrum for magnesium, shown in the diagram. It says that the percent abundance for magnesium 24 is 79%. The percent abundances of the other two natural isotopes of magnesium, magnesium 25 and 26, are approximately equal. And it tells us to complete the mass spectrum in part A by drawing thick lines in the appropriate locations to represent the percent abundance of magnesium 25 and magnesium 26. Well, if magnesium 24 is about 79%, that means that the other two isotopes have to have a total mass of about 21%. So if both of those are equal, Equal, that means that each of them should be somewhere around 10.5%. So I'll draw two bars right here that are somewhere around 10.5%, just a, just a little bit above the 10% level there. So if you did that, give yourself a point. Now, part two in A here says describe the difference in atomic structure that accounts for the difference in mass between magnesium 25 and magnesium 26. Well, we know that isotopes are different in the fact that they have different numbers of neutrons. And so magnesium 26 has one more neutron than magnesium 25. So if you said that, once again, give yourself a point as well. Let's move on to part B. It says a student prepares a 1.85 times 10 to the negative third molar solution of magnesium nitrate in beaker one, which is the first one here, and a 2.80 times 10 to the negative fourth molar solution of sodium hydroxide solution in beaker two, as we see here on the right. And we have a particle diagram that's shown here represents a magnesium ion, Mg2 plus, in beaker one. A sodium ion in beaker two has weaker attraction to water than the magnesium ion does. Explain this phenomenon using Coulomb's law and each of the following. So uh, part one talks about the relative charge of the ion. So what you wanna say here is that the sodium ion has a lower magnitude of charge than the magnesium two plus ion. One plus, of course, has less charge than a two plus. And so that means that the Coulombic attractions of the sodium ion to water molecules will be weaker than the Coulombic attractions of magnesium two plus ions to water. So if you said something like that, give yourself a point for that. The next part here, part two, talks about the relative radii of the ions. Well, we have to think about this in terms, of course, the relative atomic radii of those two ions. So magnesium two plus has a smaller ionic radius than sodium plus. Uh, those are both isoelectronic ions. And so we know that the one that has the more positive charge is gonna have the smaller ionic radius. So since the ion centers of those magnesium ions can get closer or approach closer to the individual water molecules than sodium ions can, that tells us that the Coulombic attractions of sodium ions to water are gonna be weaker than the Coulombic attractions of magnesium ions to water. So if you said something like that, once again, give yourself a point for that one as well. Now moving on to part C, it tells us just to calculate the pH of the solution in beaker two. And so we notice that it has a concentration of 2.80 times 10 to the negative fourth molar sodium hydroxide. So that means that the hydroxide concentration is 
2.80 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. If we take the negative log of that value, that's going to give us the pOH. And so the pOH of this is about 3.553. Now we know that if you want to find the pH of something, well, pH plus pOH equals 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. So all we have to do here is take 14 minus 3.553, and we find that the pH of this solution is about 10.447. So if you said that, uh, then give yourself a point for that one as well. Now, moving on to part D, we have two solutions. One of these involves magnesium. In fact, this seems to be the same solutions that we had before, and we're just going to mix these together. It says the student combines 35 0.00 milliliters of 1.85 times 10 to the negative third magnesium nitrate solution with 50 milliliters of 2.80 times 10 to the negative fourth molar sodium hydroxide solution, as we see in the diagram. Calculate the concentration of magnesium ion after the two solutions are combined, but before any reaction takes place. And of course, we assume that we can add the two volumes together. Well, the first thing we have to do here is determine uh, how much magnesium, how many moles of magnesium we have in the mixture. So the way we do that is we take the 1.85 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter of magnesium ions and multiply it by the number of liters. So 35 milliliters is 0 0.035 liters. So when you multiply molarity by liters, we find that we have about 6.48 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of magnesium ion. So we have that part of this. Now we have to determine the volume, the, the total volume after you mix the two beakers. So we have 35 milliliters plus 50 milliliters, that's 85 milliliters or 0 0.08. 8500 liters. So to find the molarity, we have to take the moles of magnesium that we just calculated and divide that by 0.08500 liters. When you do that, you find that the molarity of the magnesium ion here is about 7.62 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So if you said that, give yourself a point for part D. Now, moving on to part E, we have a question about dissolving the dissolution of magnesium hydroxide. That's represented by the following equation. Now, we have that here, and there's a KSP value. And part one says, write the expression for the solubility product constant, the KSP. So all we have to do here is products over reactants raise the power of the coefficients. Of course, we have to leave out the solid. So it's KSP equals the magnesium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration squared. And of course, that squared is because there's a two in front of the hydroxide. So give yourself a point if you said that. Now, part two says after the two solutions are combined in beaker three, as described in part D, but before any reaction takes place, the concentration of hydroxide ion is one 1.65 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. Using your answer to part D, calculate the value of the reaction quotient Q. So once again, Q looks just like K, except it's not necessarily at equilibrium. So we just plug in the values. In the, uh, the last part there, part D, we said that the magnesium ion concentration was 7.62 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. And the problem right here tells us that the hydroxide concentration is 1.65 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So we calculate this and you find that the value for Q is 2.07 times 10 to the negative 11. So give yourself a point if you said that. Now, the next part, part three says, using the reaction quotient, that's what we just calculated, predict whether a precipitate should form as the mixture in beaker three approaches equilibrium and justify your answer. Well, we have to compare Q versus K. So we just figured out what Q was, and K is given to us up here in the problem. It's 5.61 times 10 to the negative 12th. So it sure looks like Q is greater than K. And so if Q is greater than K, then that means, yes, we are going to have a precipitate form. So if you gave the correct judgment and answer there, give yourself a point for part E. Now, lastly, we have part F. It says in a separate experiment, the student adds nitric acid, HNO3, to decrease the pH of a saturated solution containing some undissolved magnesium hydroxide solid. 
does the amount of undissolved magnesium hydroxide solid increase, decrease, or remain the same as the nitric acid is added? And justify your answer. Well, we have to think about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. So here's that equation again for the dissolution of magnesium hydroxide in aqueous solution. Now, if we are decreasing the pH, that essentially means that we are getting rid, or I should say we are removing some of the hydroxide ions. And so that's the effect of decreasing the pH on this particular reaction. So if we decrease the concentration of hydroxide, what is that going to do to the reaction according to Le Chatelier's principle? Well, we know that it's going to shift the reaction toward the product. So that means that we're going to increase the amount of products. We're going to have more magnesium and more hydroxide uh, formed in the, in the process. And that's going to only be able to happen by causing a decrease in the amount of undissolved magnesium hydroxide. So what you would see is some of that magnesium hydroxide solid would dissolve. And so that's the answer. It's gonna cause a decrease. Uh, if you wanna talk about this in terms of Q, so we know that as the hydroxide ions decrease, the value of Q also decreases, and that means the reaction will produce more products at the expense of magnesium hydroxide. So that Q can be equal to K again. So that is your answer for part F. So that is question one. So how'd you do? Leave a comment down below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Although around AP exam time, things get really busy. So please don't feel too bad if I don't reply to your comment personally. And don't forget to watch my walkthrough videos for all the other 2025 free response questions. The official answer keys will be posted to AP Central sometime in late summer 2025. Thanks for watching. All the best in your academic pursuits, and I'll see you soon.